Hello everyone, my name is Dennis Whiskers and this is VEMonline.net. This time we will talk about shoulder joint stability. Joints in our bodies come in all shapes and sizes. The most important factor to consider regarding joint stability is relative proportion of two articulating surfaces. For example, in shoulder joint the humeral head of the upper arm is disproportionately larger than glenoid fossa of the scapula where it sits in. This makes the joint more mobile but less stable because it is so shallow and there is less contact between the bones. Now in comparison the acetabulum of the hip joint is much deeper and it wraps around the head of the femur much more, therefore making the joint much more stable but less mobile. Ok, so shoulder joint is very mobile but not that stable. What are the structures that make up for its stability then? Well, those are ligaments and so-called sits muscles that surround the joint and depending on their tone, they will contribute to joint stability greatly. Ligaments. As a general rule, the more ligaments the joint has and the tighter they are, the more stable the joint is. At the same time, tight ligaments restrict movement, uh, so again, uh, this is why extra stability means less mobility. If inappropriate or repeated stress is applied to ligaments, they cannot stretch or tear. This is why people in sports are more prone to ligament injuries, and we all know somebody with chronic shoulder or knee problems. Ligaments surrounding rotator cuff are superior, middle and inferior glenohumeral ligaments, coracohumeral ligament, transverse humeral ligament, and coracoacromial ligament. Let's think about the names. Glenohumeral. Coracohumeral. Humeral. Coracoacromial. So these are the ligaments and they are considered as the main component for joint stability. However, muscles that surround shoulder joint are even more important because depending on how tight they are or how strong they are, they can increase the uh, shoulder joint stability even more so. Now there are many muscles that cross shoulder joint, but only four of them are essential for shoulder joint stability. These muscles are so called sits muscles. Sits, that's S-I-T-S, -S, uh, those are the first letters of these muscles. First one, that's number one, is supraspinatus. That's the only muscle that's not going to produce any type of rotational movement. Uh, no internal, no external rotation, only abduction. As the name states, uh, supraspinatus is located just above spine of the scapula. Supraspinatus. Uh, next one, number two, is infraspinatus. And again, as the name states, uh, it's found just below spine of the scapula. Now, infraspinatus does attach slightly lower on the humeral head, uh, so slightly inferior. That's why it can produce external rotation of the shoulder joint. Uh, this is very important. Next one, that's number three, is the uh, teres minor. Translating from Latin, that means uh, small round muscle. These three muscles are located on the outside surface of the uh, scapula. So that's external surface of the uh, scapula or posterior surface of the scapula. Teres minor is the most inferior one of all of them. Just like infraspinatus, teres minor is located slightly inferior on the uh, humeral head. This is why both of them can produce external rotation of the uh, shoulder joint. Now this is very very important. Both of these muscles are uh, the most important external rotators of the shoulder joint. Now if there is anything at all wrong with the shoulder joint, especially chronic injuries, I can say almost for certain that both of these muscles will need strengthening. And the last one, that's number four, is subscapularis. Subscapularis is located on anterior surface of the uh, shoulder blade. That's internal surface of the scapula. 
Subscapularis is the strongest internal rotator of the shoulder joint. These last three muscles are gonna play this tug of war uh, between internal rotation and external rotation. Uh, subscapularis is gonna produce internal rotation, so it is gonna draw shoulder joint into this uh, rotational movement towards the front. Intraspinatus and teres minor are gonna produce the opposite, right? So they are gonna externally rotate the uh, shoulder joint. And this is very, very important. So this tug of war between internal rotators and external rotators, we will talk about this concept in, uh, in later videos. Uh, but so far, just try to remember that uh, there are four sits muscles. Uh, supraspinatus is gonna be the one that will elevate the shoulder into abduction. Infraspinatus teres minor are gonna externally rotate the uh, shoulder joint. And subscapularis is gonna internally rotate the shoulder joint. That's good enough for now. Now this is it for now. Uh, in next videos we'll break it all down in detail. Uh, we will look at these muscles individually, talk in anatomy and uh, their most common injuries. Uh, this channel is very young, uh, please help us grow, hit that subscribe button, also if you found this useful share this with your friends, um, thank you, be well, I'll see you soon, bye bye.